and now we're ending up in Toledo, Ohio, 1931. There have been cathedrals built since this time, but not a lot of this quality. And of course, uh, by the time after the war, we're heading into modernism and kind of iconoclasm. We had this strong bishop, Bishop Stritch, Samuel Stritch. He was uh, second bishop of Toledo, was a young diocese. He was 38 years old, and he's, in, he's, a, he's a hot guy. He's going to do big things. He came to Toledo as bishop. He's going to make it happen. He needs a proper cathedral. He hires a top Midwestern architect, not well known, but did a lot of buildings, John Comes, C-O-M-E-S, Comes from Pittsburgh. And Comes did a lot of work. If you go to Pittsburgh, you'll see his work everywhere. He was the kind of the approved architect for Pittsburgh. He also worked on four cathedrals in the Midwest. Very good architect, kind of Art Deco, has a kind of Art Deco sensibility, and certainly on the Romanesque side of things. Um, but Stritch wanted it. He found the right architect. They worked together. They said, it's Toledo, Ohio. We're going to look at Spain. We're going to look at what they call the Platteress style, which is a Spanish Gothic. And we're going to model our church on that. However, I think Comus also brought some other things to it, these two octagonal towers, this long body. It reminds me a lot of English uh, uh, cathedrals and that are kind of lower than French ones. And, and this kind of sense of um, repetitive buttresses, and, but not flying buttresses. So it's this kind of very strong, massive sense that comes from the Brits. And uh, I think the facade has a little bit to do with things like King's College Chapel, the famous King's College Chapel in Cambridge. Toledo's interesting because it's not cruciform. It's simpler than that. There's no dome. There's no huge tower. So there's things you can do to have a simpler building or simpler cathedral and still beautiful. First of all, I think when we think of high quality architecture and a cathedral, we think of stone, something that will last a long time, that's symbolic of the, uh, the eternal, and exterior and interior, if possible, stone. Maybe there's a mix of brick. And so, for instance, Toledo is very interesting because the outside has this kind of warmish, yellowish, maybe a little bit of red, yellow-red granite from Massachusetts. And then all the detail work is, is kind of a lighter white stone, uh, limestone, and that's carved. So the granite is very simple and strong. Limestone is the carved. It's easier to carve. So you get this banding, this colorful banding. The inside, though, is the walls are mainly limestone, French limestone, so they're light as you say, light and bright, but then the ceiling, and then that shows off the ceiling and the apse and the altar and so on that are colorful. So the kind of white interior beige stone color. The other thing though is lighting um, because historically we didn't have such fancy lighting and um, as much as everyone loves stained glass today, and I do too, one of the things that it did is it made these churches very dark and people were okay with that. Uh, it seemed reverent, it seemed solemn, it seemed prayerful to pray in this dark space with, with, of course, beautiful light if it's a bright day, beautiful light coming through the windows, shining colors on the floor and the walls and so on, saints, you know. Um, so that's great. But it's interesting that in the 20th century, there's this whole movement for dark stained glass, and people love that because it's prayerful and solemn. By the 1970s, 80s, people are like, oh, no, we want bright. So we don't rip out this stained glass. We just put a lot of uh, electric lights in there so that even a dark church can be lit up. But the Gothic cathedrals traditionally, if they had stained glass, would have been dark places. Today we see them all lit up by electric lights, and we think, oh, that's wonderful. I love it. But they really weren't that way. They were a lot of shadow and so on. And it's really other styles, let's say, the early Christian style, which you know, early Christian period, or uh, churches in the Renaissance that didn't have stained glass, that were much brighter and you could read, you know, you could read a book in or you could, you know, read your missile or, you know, so, um, but we do expect to read. And so I think it's uh, like a little lighting is a little bit like um, sound systems. We are so accustomed to technology, you know, just like your radio station sounding good that we expect, uh, you know, we expect the technology to be good even in our old churches. It's really, uh, it's interesting because it's dedicated to the rosary. So, of course, it has this whole story on the inside, or actually the exterior and the inside, that's all about Mary. And some of it's subtle and some of it's uh, grander. You see over in, when you walk in the front door and you look back at the rose window, you see the door mission of the Virgin as you're kind of leaving the church. Mm. And, of course, the main 
view is the uh, uh, crowning of Mary, the coronation in the apse above the altar. But the the, um, the interior has the uh, 15 mysteries of the rosary surrounding you. So it's kind of neat to have a cathedral surrounding you with images of the uh, its namesake of the rosary. Thank you.